We're continuing the master budgeting process and preparing a manufacturing overhead budget. We have already completed four of Gratman Manufacturing's operating budgets in our previous videos. The sales budget, production budget, direct materials budget, and in the last video, the direct labor budget. We're now going to produce the next operating budget in the master budgeting process, the manufacturing overhead budget. What is a manufacturing overhead budget? First, recall that manufacturing overhead are those costs which are indirectly associated with the manufacture of a finished product. Manufacturing overhead is also called factory overhead, indirect manufacturing costs, and burden. What costs are included in manufacturing overhead? Raw materials that cannot be easily associated with the finished product, called indirect materials. Labor which cannot be easily associated with the finished product, called indirect labor. Depreciation on factory buildings and machines. Insurance on the factory and property taxes incurred on the factory. The cost of maintenance for the factory facilities. Supervisor salaries, because their work cannot be traced to any one product. Equipment lease or rental costs, and the list goes on. Basically, if the cost is manufacturing related but cannot be classified as direct materials or direct labor, it should be classified as manufacturing overhead. However, manufacturing overhead can be divided into costs which are variable and costs which are fixed. Indirect materials, indirect labor, maintenance for the factory facilities. These are all variable in nature because these costs change with the level of activity. If production increases, these costs would increase, and if production reduces, the costs would also reduce. Other overhead costs are fixed. Depreciation on the factory building and machines, insurance and property taxes, supervisor salary, and equipment rental. Regardless of the level of activity, these are likely to be fixed. Well, at least within the relevant range. It's clear that manufacturing overhead is made up of both variable and fixed costs. When we are costing products, we therefore include direct materials, direct labor, and both variable and fixed manufacturing overhead. This ties directly into the question of what is a manufacturing overhead budget. The manufacturing overhead budget is dependent on cost behavior in that overhead costs are divided between variable and fixed overhead costs, similar to what we just analyzed. If there are mixed manufacturing overhead costs, such as utilities and indirect labor, they're divided into their variable and fixed components using a cost behavior estimation method, such as high-low or regression analysis. The manufacturing overhead budget is separated into sections, one for variable and one for fixed. This allows management to easily see which costs will change with a change in the level of activity, such as an increase in production volume. Variable costs are shown based on the level of activity, which might be machine hours, direct labor hours, or units produced. Fixed costs are shown as, well, fixed, at least within the relevant range. We're continuing with our example of Gratman Manufacturing to demonstrate the preparation of a manufacturing overhead budget. Gratman Manufacturing expects variable overhead costs to fluctuate with the production volume. Variable overhead costs are based on the following rates per direct labor hour. Indirect materials, $1.25. Indirect labor, $0.70. Cents. Utilities, $0.30. Cents. Overhead is applied to production based on direct labor hours. Gratman also recognizes that some monthly overhead costs are fixed. Maintenance, $15,000. Supervision, $12,400. Depreciation, $33,000. Property taxes, $11,400. And other, $20,476. Prepare a manufacturing overhead budget for the first three months and the quarter. Step one is to determine the cost driver for the variable overhead costs. The cost driver is the independent variable which causes the variable cost to change. As the independent variable increases, the variable costs increase. And as the independent variable decreases, the variable costs decrease. The cost driver for variable costs can be anything such as machine hours, direct labor hours, direct labor costs, or the number of units produced. To determine this, you must first go back to the question. We can see that there are two references to the cost driver in this question. The fact that Gratman Manufacturing expects variable overhead costs to fluctuate with the production volume based on the following rates per direct labor hour. In addition, overhead is applied to production based on direct labor hours. So we know that when determining the total variable overhead costs, we need to use the direct labor hours as a cost driver, the independent variable that causes variable costs to change. We'll obtain this information for Gratman through the direct labor budget. The total required direct labor hours is what we need, 
16,800 hours in January, 18,400 hours in February, 19,080 hours in March, and 54,280 hours in the first quarter. Note that the variable costs may have a different cost driver, such as direct labor costs, machine hours, or even units produced. But for this example, Grattman Manufacturing, we're using direct labor hours. Step two is to start and prepare the manufacturing overhead budget using a chart. As always, we start with the title, Grattman Manufacturing, then the name of the budget, Manufacturing Overhead Budget, and the date for the quarter ended March 31st. We then move on and add the necessary columns. Since we're completing the budget for the months and the quarter, we have one column for the description, three columns for the months, and one column for the quarter, for a total of five columns. The headings are the description, each of the months, January, February, and March, and finally the total column, which here is called first quarter. We can now add our first heading, variable cost, under which we'll list all of the variable costs related to Grattman Manufacturing. We can now move on to step three, determine the total variable overhead costs. The formula is cost driver, for Grattman Manufacturing, we know it's direct labor hours, multiplied by the variable cost per cost driver, which equals the total variable cost. Note that we have to perform this calculation for each variable cost. In order to determine the different variable costs, we have to return to the question. Here we can see the variable overhead costs are indirect materials of $1.20 per direct labor hour, indirect labor of $0.70 cents per direct labor hour, and utilities of $0.30 cents per direct labor hour. We now have each of the variable overhead costs, so we can use this information for step 4, calculate the total variable overhead costs for each variable cost, applying the formula. We start with the information from step 1, which is our cost driver. We need the total required direct labor hours for Grattman Manufacturing in order to calculate the total variable overhead costs per period. So we'll add this to our step 4, direct labor hours of 16,800 for January, 18,400 for February, 19,080 for March, and 54,280 for the first quarter. We now add all of the rows we need. The number of rows depends on the problem, but in this case, we need five, starting with the title variable costs for the first row. Then, each of the variable overhead costs, indirect materials, which the question told us is $1.20 per direct labor hour. Then, indirect labor, 70 cents per direct labor hour, and utilities, 30 cents per direct labor hour. Finally, we have the final row, which is total variable costs. We're now ready to do calculations. We can apply the formula from step 3, cost driver, which in this case is direct labor hours, multiplied by the variable cost per direct labor hour equals total variable costs. So, for January, 16,800 hours multiplied by $1.20 per direct labor hour, which is equal to $20,160 for indirect materials. 16,800 hours multiplied by 70 cents per direct labor hour is $11,760 for indirect labor. 16,800 hours multiplied by 30 cents per direct labor hour is equal to $5,040 for utilities. Add them all up and we get $36,960 of total variable costs for January. Moving on to February, 18,400 hours multiplied by $1.20 per direct labor hour is indirect materials of $22,080. 18,400 hours multiplied by 70 cents per direct labor hour is equal to indirect labor of $12,880. 18,400 hours multiplied by 30 cents per direct labor hour is utilities of $5,520. The total February variable costs, $40,480. Moving on to March, 19,080 hours multiplied by $1.20 per direct labor hour for indirect materials, $22,896. 19,080 hours multiplied by 70 cents per direct labor hour for indirect labor, $13,356. 19,800 hours multiplied by 30 cents per direct labor hour is equal to utilities of $5,724. Total variable costs for March, $41,976. We now calculate the total for the first quarter. We can do that by multiplying the first quarter hours by each variable cost, or we can simply add each of the rows for January, February, and March, which is what I'm going to do. For indirect materials, 20,160 plus 22,080 plus 22,896 is equal to 65,136. 
for indirect labor, 11,760 plus 12,880 plus 13,356 is equal to 37,996. For utilities, 5,040 plus 5,520 plus 5,724 is equal to 16,284. And for the total variable costs, 36,960 plus 40,480 plus 41,976 is equal to 119,416. We now have all of the variable costs, which means we can move on to step five, which is to transfer the variable costs into the manufacturing overhead budget. Notice that we did not transfer the direct labor hour row into the budget. At least, not yet we didn't. You can see that this budget will be a larger budget as the chart almost fills the whole page, but we've not even started on the fixed costs, which is step six. Add the fixed manufacturing overhead costs into the manufacturing overhead budget. First, we go back to the question to determine what the fixed manufacturing costs are. We can see that monthly fixed costs are maintenance of $15,000 per month, supervision of $12,400 per month, depreciation of $33,000 per month, property taxes of $11,400 per month, and other fixed costs of $20,476 per month. We now have all the fixed cost information in order to add the fixed cost to the manufacturing overhead budget. Because we have limited space, I'm creating the fixed overhead cost portion of the manufacturing overhead budget separately. We'll add it to the variable costs later. First, we'll add all of the descriptions for each row, starting with fixed costs as a heading. Then all the fixed costs, maintenance, supervision, depreciation, property taxes, and other fixed costs. We then have a subtotal, total fixed cost. We're then going to use the information from the question to populate all of the fixed costs, starting with maintenance costs of $15,000 for January, February, and March, with the first quarter summation of all the months equal to $45,000. Next is supervision, $12,400 for January, February, and March, with the first quarter summation equal to $37,200. Depreciation is $33,000 each month, January, February, and March. First quarter summation, $99,000 followed by property taxes of $11,400 for January, February, and March. First quarter summation, $34,200. And last, the other fixed costs, $20,476 for January, February, and March, with the first quarter summation being $61,428. Total fixed costs per month come from adding each of the columns. Note that the column total for every month will be the same. In this case, 15,000 plus 12,400 plus 33,000 plus 11,400 plus 20,476 for a total of $92,276 for the month of January. The same total is noted for February and March because fixed costs don't change. Not within the relevant range, at least. The total for the quarter can be calculated in two ways, either as the summation of all the columns, 92,276 plus 92,276 plus 92,276, which is equal to $276,828, or as the total for the first quarter column, which is 45,000 plus 37,200 plus 99,000 plus 34,200 plus 61,428 for the same total of 276,828. That's it for the fixed manufacturing overhead costs for the manufacturing overhead budget. We can now add this information to the manufacturing overhead budget's variable overhead costs. You'll notice that I had to reduce the size of the font in order to get all of the rows into the slide. Apologies for that. But we now have all of the variable and fixed manufacturing overhead costs on the manufacturing overhead budget. However, note that there are still three rows left. The first row is for the total manufacturing overhead costs, adding together the total variable overhead plus the total fixed overhead for every column. For January, 36,960 plus 92,276 is equal to 129,236. For February, 40,480 plus 92,276 is equal to 132,756. For March, 41,976 plus 92,276 is equal to 134,252. And for the first quarter, 
119,416 plus 276,828 is equal to 396,244. Perfect. But what are the last two rows for? Well, some textbooks calculate the manufacturing overhead application rate, the rate per direct labor hour, which can be used to determine the per unit cost of the product. If we now add in the direct labor hours from step one, which was January 16,800 hours, February 18,400 hours, March 19,080 hours, and the first quarter 54,280 hours, and add it to our manufacturing overhead budget chart, we get the same amounts. January 16,800, February 18,400, March 19,080, and the first quarter 54,280 hours. We can now use this to calculate the first quarter manufacturing overhead application rate per direct labor hour, which is 396,244 divided by 54,280 direct labor hours, which is equal to $7.30 per direct labor hour. This is the manufacturing overhead application rate for both the variable and the fixed per direct labor hour. Note that we did not calculate the rate per month because as the level of activity changes, the fixed overhead portion of the application rate changes, so this would cause a different application rate for every single month. Generally, the application rate is calculated annually, but for purposes of this budget, we're going to do it quarterly. We'll be using this rate later when we complete the budgeted income statement, so keep it handy. That's it. We have now completed the manufacturing overhead budget, which means that we've prepared the first five operating budgets in the master budgeting process and the last operating budget needed to calculate the cost per unit, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. All of these budgets, the sales budget, production budget, direct materials budget, direct labor budget, and the manufacturing overhead budget that we just completed are required parts of the master budgeting process for a manufacturing firm. In our next video, we'll continue to move forward with the last operating budget before the budgeted income statement, which is the Selling and Administrative Expense Budget. Thank you so much for watching.